This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me again, Will Patterson, and today I'm going to be giving you another video, but I'm going in a different route today. So basically, a lot of you guys want to know how to create a very simple logo design in Adobe Illustrator, not using hand lettering, not using the pen tool, but maybe just using font. So I'm going to show you how to create a vintage logo type in Illustrator. So the first thing you want to do is work out what your company name is. Let's just say I'm called Will Patterson as my company, because I technically am. And then let's say we want this to be the main logo. Now for this to be vintage, we can do a lot of stuff to it, but we want to find a good font. Now the trick with fonts is you want to find a good one, but you also want to be able to find one that you can freely use or one that you've already bought. So we can have a look at a few of these fonts if we want to. So I'm going to just go here and have a look over here in fact. And if we just hover over them, we can see which one's the best. And we'll just go ahead and find one very quickly and we'll get on to the uh, good making a logo design. So that's a good part of this. So I'm just going to go down here, look for one that I like, one that we can use. I like this one. This one's called Southern Air, and this is the personal use one. So I can't use this one in a logo design because it's personal use, because I'll be uh, creating it for money. But then if you go ahead and buy the license, you should be fine. Now, right at this moment, this is a te editable text. So that means that we can keep adding text to this. But what we really want to do is want to make this into a shape. Now, all fonts are made out of vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and alt and drag this, and that's going to create a copy. And I've just drugged it down here and I'm going to change the color of this so we can see it later but we're doing that just so we have a copy of the live text then I'm going to press command shift and O and what that does is it creates this into a shape so now it's no longer editable text but it's actually a vector shape and you can still scale it but you just can't do anything else with it really so now we're going to do this we're going to go to unite over in the pathfinder function over here unite is so we can unite all the edges as you can see the overlapping bits we can unite it all together to be just one compound shape or group so we've got will patterson now let's say i'm a logo designer or let's say I'm a sign painter as well, sign painter logo designer. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create like a circle kind of looking logo here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press L or go to my circle up here and I'm gonna hold shift. And I'm gonna bring out a circle like this. Holding shift will keep the aspect ratio of the circle in an actual circle. So it's not like an oval. If you hold shift, it forces it into place. So I'm going to hold this over the top like that. And I've created a circle. Now this circle is going to be where we're going to write on. And by that, I mean the font is going to follow the path of this circle and make it a bunch easier for us to do. So I'm going to get the circle somewhat in the middle. And then I'm going to go to my text bar here, hold down and go to type on path tool. And what this will enable me to do is with the highlighted path, I can click at the top here. Oops press it there and it will start creating words. And I'm going to just say I'm a sign painter, sign painter. You can't really see that very well, but that is okay. I'm going to next off, go ahead down here and move it over here. Like so, if I can actually get it right, there's these little handle bits that we need to move like this. And I'm going to move this one over here, move this one back down over here. Cause this is what's going to create the border radius of our circle. Then I'm going to press center up here and pressing that align to center will make sure that the word is at the top. Now you can see this is really small and it's in a different font. So what we want to do is go up here when we've highlighted it and just scale this up to about 60. Okay. And then we're going to change the font and we're going to change this font to let's say Brandon grotesque because it's a pretty cool font. And then we're going to go ahead and change the type. So I'm going to actually just write this all again, but keeping my sign or the caps lock kept on, I'm going to press sign painter and then I'm going to press command and enter. And that's going to put it there. That doesn't look too good at the minute because it's too big. So we're going to bring it down a little bit and we're going to just like work out the best place for it. Another thing with this type is that you want to make sure that the type, once you've got it there, is not like this, where it's actually centered on the actual line of it, but we want it to be in the middle of the line. I'll show you what I mean. If you highlight your word and then go up to type, go to type on a path, go to type on a path options, you'll get this little box thing come up. And what we want to do is press preview, and then we're going to align the path to center. 
and we're going to press OK. Now we've got that. I'm going to actually add logo designer into this as well, so we can see how much space we want it to take. Now the trick is with this is we need to change the sizing of this um, as it is. So I'm going to just go ahead and press Command A or Control A. Then I'm going to press Command Shift and then this little key here, which is going to enable me to scale this down and up. It's going to actually change the font size. And as you can see, when it gets smaller, it follows less of the loop. So I'm going to scale it down like this. Then with it all selected, I'm going to press com Option and then go ahead with the right arrow key, which is going to change the tracking. And then I'm going to press Command Shift or not even shift, command and enter to finish once I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale this up a little bit. Then I'm going to bring these all together and I'm going to work out the best placement for this. So once you've got your words over the top of it, highlight everything and then go to your align. And if you don't have a line, go up to window and then go to align and make sure it's ticked and then press align vertically. So it's going to align the whole center part of it here. So everything's going to be in line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up a tiny bit. And we're going to copy this first part here down to the bottom. So we do this by pressing Command C. And then to paste in front, we go to Command F. You can't see anything's changed, but basically we just copy this and pasted it back in. I'm going to press R. And I'm going to hold Shift and rotate 180 degrees. And what this is going to do is rotate the whole type. Now the problem is, is this type's backwards now. So we need to highlight that type and go up to type. Type on a path, type on a path, options, preview it, and then flip it. When we flip it, it's going to flip the type so it's actually facing the right direction. I'm going to bring it up a little bit as well. The next thing we need to do is actually work out what to say. And I'm just going to say England, just like so. And that's just going to be a little bit for us there to have. And that looks good right there. But then I want to have some other words in the center here. So I'm just going to write out some other things here, like maybe... Sign Peter Logan Design Will Patterson available for commissions. And this is just a very, very simple way of creating a logo in the computer. And it's really good for actually working out your compositions because we can create some cool compositions here. And I want to go established uh, 2012 here. And I'm going to make this a bit smaller if we can. I'm just going to use a scale function here to make it a bit smaller. Change the tracking by Alt and then the arrow keys. I'm going to see what happens here. Move this up a little bit. I'm going to move these down a bit. So I'm going to select these and make sure these are actually a bit lower down. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and change the tracking and the sizing of this. Bring it down a little bit more. It's basically just fiddling around with it. Once you've fiddled around with it enough, things work. I'm actually going to get rid of the England UK bit at the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down and say England UK. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying different ideas for different things that I could do. I'm going to highlight all this, deselect that, and just bring this up a tiny bit more. And we've got ourselves there, a pretty nice looking composition for a logo. There's a lot of work that has to go into it, but for creating something that's not like on paper, you can actually get the, the actual layout correctly. And the next thing we need to do is just work out the spacing for this. Maybe add like a couple of things like, I don't know, just to block it off, like a line. And you can do this by adding a square or a stroke just there. Like so, we will just copy this over to this side. And then all we do is we center all of these like so. England, UK, these lines here are a bit too big. So basically just play around with it. That's all we're doing in this. Just having a little play around, see what works best. Good thing about Illustrator is it's not on paper so that you can do whatever you want really and now we have what a good layout is so this is a good layout and what we want to do next is further edit this to give it the vintage feel and the way we do this is by creating a new artboard or just copying and pasting it onto a new artboard so select everything 
go over to the new artboard and paste it in. And then we're gonna go ahead and outline everything. So highlight everything, press Command, Shift and O, and you'll see that everything turns, or should I say your fonts turn into shapes. But we still need to get these little shapes here, these lines and squares to be an actual shape and not a path. You can tell it's a path because it's got a line running straight through it. So what we need to do is go to object whilst that's highlighted and go to path then outline strokes. And what that's going to do is create those strokes into a path. The next thing we're going to do is highlight everything and press command G and that's going to group everything together. And that's a good thing to do. We don't want to ever destroy the previous work. So we're grouping it together and we're going to press command C and then command F and we're going to drag it down here. Or you can just go ahead and option drag and let go of option and it will basically just copy that piece of work for you. I'm just gonna bring this lower down there like so. And now we have a pretty good layout. The next thing we need to do actually is create uh, a nice little texture on this to make it look handwritten if you want that really vintage feel. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It depends on your preference. So I'm gonna scale this up a little bit and then go up to effects. And we're gonna go over to blur and go to Gaussian blur. Now in the Gaussian blur, select about four or a certain number that doesn't make it too blurry, but we want it to be a little bit blurry. Next thing we want to do is we want to rasterize this. Now that might seem like a really strange thing to do in Illustrator, but for this effect to work, we need to rasterize it. So go up to object, go to rasterize and just press OK. And now we have like a JPEG image on the screen. But to make it a vector again, we need to go up to image trace. I've got mine here, but if you don't have yours, go up to window and then go to image trace. And then we can go to image trace and I've got a little preset here called hand look for small. And what it's done is it's created an image trace of the logo, making it look as if it's sort of handwritten and vintagey. So it makes it look less clean and perfect. Now we need to actually expand this, so go to expand, but if you don't know my settings, my settings here are on screen right now. There's a bunch of different things you can play around with, but the main thing is, is get your noise up to 100% and then that'll get rid of any like little bits of things that you don't want in there. So make sure it's there and then go to expand. And when you've expanded it, you've got yourself a vectored logo that looks pretty decent and it's actually very, very easy to do. So it's good for doing clean work or doing logo designs for people where you don't want to use, let's say, paper or whatever. For me though, I never create logos like this. This is the part where I generally get a feel for a layout maybe or something like that. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, subscribe down at that bottom left hand corner and press that bell so you know whenever I upload. I'm going to be doing these videos more often now because you guys want to see them. But I hope you guys enjoy the little video that I've given you today and that you've learned a little bit about layout and how to create a custom vintage logo in Adobe Illustrator. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Goodbye. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If any of you are interested in learning UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design boot camp intended to get you a full time job in the industry. You can learn more about this at devmountain.com or click the link in the description below.